Imagine creating a solar cell that could absorb all colors of light emitted by the sun. Or imagine watching biological processes as they happen deep beneath our skin. There's a process that could pave the way to these applications, and it's called upconversion. Hi everyone, my name is Diane Wu, and I'm a graduate student in Gen Dion in Alberto Saleo's labs at Stanford University. Upconversion is a simple idea, converting light up from lower energy to higher energy. Take this green laser light. If we pass it through a solution of upconverting dyes, it gets converted up from green light to blue light. So how does this work? The key is that in upconverting materials, there is a resting spot for excited state electrons, what's called a metastable intermediate state. First, the material absorbs a lower energy photon, which excites an electron to this intermediate state. Like a step on the staircase, this intermediate state allows the excited electron to hang out a while. It waits for a second lower energy photon to get absorbed. This then pushes the electron up to an even higher energy level. Finally, the electron can decay from this higher energy level back down to the ground state, emitting a photon of higher energy than either of the two lower energy photons absorbed. Upconversion has been studied for over 50 years. In the last decade, fresh interest in the field has grown with the development of upconverting nanoparticles as well as bright upconverting molecules. The application that drew me into studying upconversion is that these materials could dramatically improve the performance of solar cells. Solar cells convert sunlight to electricity. Here's a plot of the different energies of sunlight that hit the Earth. Solar cells have a threshold energy, which is called the band gap energy. Sunlight that has energy greater than the band gap can be converted to electricity. Sunlight that is below this threshold energy, however, cannot be used by the cell. The idea is to upconvert this wasted light to energies above the band gap. This would put all the sunlight to use, letting the solar cell make more electricity than it could before. Here's the catch. Today's upconverters are not very efficient. For example, those that might be useful for solar cells have efficiencies on the order of 1% or even lower. This means that for every 100 lower energy photons absorbed by the material, only one higher energy photon will be emitted. Because of this, you have to blast your sample with a laser in order to see upconversion. One way to make upconverters work better is to use plasmon resonances. Plasmons are collective oscillations of free charges in a material. Imagine shaking a slinky. Most of the time it just flops around, but if you shake it at a particular speed, a standing wave emerges, a resonance. The free electrons in a silver nanoparticle aren't that different. When they are hit with a light of a particular frequency, like the slinky, they also have a resonant response. You can see this resonance as an intense absorption, giving these silver particles their beautiful colors. At the surface of each silver nanoparticle in this vial, the intensity of light is much greater than it is outside the vial. Basically, each tiny silver nanoparticle collects light from an area much larger than its actual size. And then it packs the intensity of this light into a small region near its surface. To put some numbers to it, this kind of particle can enhance light intensity by tens or even hundreds of times. The big idea here is to place plasmonic structures near upconverting materials. As you might guess, it's a little more complicated than simply putting two vials next to each other. Let's take a closer look. Here's a plasmonic nanorod. It can be used as a tiny antenna for light. When you put it near an upconverting nanoparticle, the nanorod concentrates the light hitting the upconverter. This increases the chance that upconversion will occur. The antenna can also help broadcast upconverted light from the nanoparticle back out into space. Like an old-fashioned hearing aid, plasmons can help funnel a signal from a large space into a small space. Plasmons can also do the opposite. Like a phonograph horn broadcasting sound, Plasmons can also help broadcast the signal from a small space into a large space. In this way, plasmon resonances have helped enhance upconversion by up to 450 times. But in other cases, plasmons can actually decrease the light emitted by an upconverter. 
Here at Stanford and in many research groups around the world, we are trying to figure out exactly what's going on and how to maximize the enhancements achieved. So to recap, upconversion is a way to convert light from lower energies to higher energies. For example, from green light to blue light. To improve today's upconverting materials, researchers have been studying how they behave near plasmon resonances. To learn more, check out our recent perspective in the Journal of Physical Chemistry Letters. 